Oh, they got the voice line. Do you hear that in game? Uh, no. The the, <laughs> below, the the announcer said Pyrus Esports. Oh, okay. Well, I did hear that. I thought you meant some kind of other voice line. You were getting me excited oh, no, no, that no. maybe someone had bought my voice line. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, uh, not a lot of people are going to do that. Mm -hmm. Um. <laughs> Undying uh, banned out from secret as well. So let's see what the case is going to be here for Polaris. I mean, do you next, please? <sighs> Although to be fair, if they go ahead and let the Nyx through, they're going to ban the Marcy. I understand it. I feel like Secret might still just go into the Nyx Assassin, but Polaris are a team that have the capability of going a push strat. Like that is something that Secret like to do. But if you've already gotten rid of the Enigma, you've already gotten rid of the Marcy, two of the and Primal Beast, some of the higher tempo heroes, even the Undying, right? You can just look to snap up a lot of those heroes with the second and third picks uh, before Secret are able to truly address them. So I think <laughs> Secret don't want to be putting themselves into too much of a corner they're still going to go with comfort though you know this is something that we were talking about in day one right they were giving heroes uh people their comfort heroes a lot at the start puppy was having the enchantress he was having the chen you gave uh crystalis the uh razor you gave him the monkey king just stuff that they're very very comfortable with so why not stick with it you know just take as much nerves out of the equation as possible but i want to see polaris now you know what you can't pick as a mid so I think you need to be looking to pick that one up at the end of the second phase or with the first pick of the second phase. But now you just need to look to up the tempo, go into a little bit more of this push style. I honestly wouldn't even hate to see a Lion come out super early. Lion is one of the best heroes against the Knicks just because you have that lockdown with the Hex from a decent range that doesn't do any damage. So there's no way he's going to be able to get the Carapace off. Yep. I like that suggestion. I think you can even consider going to the Tusk for Polaris because it does give them some flexibility. There's uh, the tempo. There's something, yeah. It also kind of takes away a hero from Poppy. If we, it's a minor thing, Ooh. but I, I suppose it is nice. And uh, that was actually one of the heroes that would be consistently banned out against Polaris in, in the qualifiers. AU has an incredible Chen. They play very well around it. They do, but... I'm kind of crossing my fingers, at least if I'm uh, if I'm banking on secret here. I kind of want to see the Enchantress come out, just so that they get the uh, the little friends coming into the equation, and they can just <laughs> turn all of Chen's minions in back onto him. Might not be now though. Might, they might just want the higher impact pick to come through. Most of the time, you like to try and pair one lane together entirely, so it wouldn't surprise me, considering how they've been leaning into resolution being the true carry a lot of the time, uh, if they picked up his hero in here and then looked to try and ban out a few of the responses to it. It does seem like, though, Polaris early on, like, this is a lot of physical damage, and like you mentioned, push from the Chen. So do you need to be considering someone that is going to have a, a decent time against physical? Wouldn't hate an Underlord, to be honest. I think it's a pretty good Underlord game already, just in that the laning stage is a little difficult, but it's not as difficult as it used to be when you consider... Ooh, okay, an Invoker Let's super go. early on. Uh, it, it's not... i got to say, I love the hat from Zayat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, a, just a traditional hat. Um, the Underlord's really good against the physical damage, but also I feel like considering the nerf that the Chen got both in terms of the damage that his creeps are able to do, but also the, the Mind Stealer, the Mana Burn creep, it's, it's not as bad. You're always going to be able to spam out that Firestorm. You're going to be able to draw out this game. So I, I wouldn't hate to see that pick come out eventually. But for now, they're going to go the Invoker. Well, this is always a treat when we have the opportunity to, to watch Anisha Invoker. Played it four times throughout the qualifiers. I believe he played it yesterday as well. I'm just trying to see what series it was. It was against uh, Nouns in that game two that they lost. Uh, potentially may have played it. Did they only play two series? No, they played three. They played uh, Vici as well. So he also played it versus Vici Gaming. Uh, they also lost that game. So it looks like he's zero and two at the moment, unless I'm missing another Invoker game so far. But uh, no doubt that Nisha can perform on this hero. Again, one of the best Invokers out there. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, it, it is a relatively versatile hero, right? Most of the time... Uh... Actually, I kind of prefer it now compared to when there was the small camp, right? Because Invoker is not one of those heroes that's able to flash farm with the the uh, the small camp. And if you take that away from the enemy team and you go the quas style of build, then you're much more capable of just dominating the lane. You know, the, they've yep. still got the tower regen, they've still got the water runes to be able to play around with. But 
they're not going to be far ahead of you on farm, which a lot of the time is the issue for a uh, a quas style of invoker. Then again, they've got a Nexus assassin, so maybe they just go Exhort and go for kills. I will say though, I think Invoker has some very big issues with people ganking early and, and diving him under the tower. And I think Chen and Tusk are arguably one of the two of the better supports to be able to do that if the Tusk is going to be played as a support. Again, keep in mind it can be a core, but you can make a lot of rotations early out of Polaris with some Chen creeps with the help of the extra damage from the Tusk tag team and even a shards just to keep him in a position. Invoker will be vulnerable to these rotations. So I'd like to see Polaris going for a mid laner on the loose that can offer some kill threat early. Conquer, one of the better matchups against Invoker. So I like this ban from Team Secret. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, they've also banned out the TA, one of the other great matchups that uh, it, it's not really a Lelouch staple compared to, you know, a lot of his more mobile heroes, but it's just about those ones that are able to kill early or just don't receive a lot of the harass in the laning stage. Uh, some people like to go down the quap route, but once you get a few points into the quas and you go ahead and earn, you honestly get disrupted from blinking a lot of the time so yep. that might be a bit of an issue in, in both of the games that they lost they were up against a ta i believe in the mid lane against vici and nouns so uh very happy that team secret have gotten rid of that one the one that they won was actually against a quap so we'll see what uh, polaris are going to look to do here and again, you just, you go back and look at the Nyx Assassin, right? Like, this is such a deterrent to a lot of Lelouch's heroes, something that you mentioned before we started, and as soon as the Nyx Assassin is picked up. So it's really making it difficult for what hero that can actually give Lelouch. You reckon they could Tusk mid here into the Invoker? I wouldn't hate it. You got some good right-click damage. It's like, you are the gank potential. You're getting that early Walrus Punch. I, I think it's not horrible, to be honest. And you're just very, very tanky in general. Yeah, I think there's a lot of potential for it. I, we have seen Lelouch played over in, in Southeast Asia. Not often, but it is something that Polaris have even pulled out as well. But uh, I think if that's going to be the case, they're going to continue to hide the flexibility all the way towards the later stages of this draft. So uh, I wonder what they're actually going to look to show here. Because again, Tusk, they've also already so far through the last chance qualifiers, Force has played it. So if you pick your position three here, then it's at least revealing that the Tusk is either a four or a two. Yeah, uh, I would be inclined to pick the position three here. The only issue is that if you pick a three and then this Tusk actually is mid, then you might be shoehorned into like a, a double melee setup or a double range setup in the laning stage, which isn't always super great. But I don't think you can play your one here, even though, uh, you know, you've already got the Chen. The Chen's pretty obviously going to be played as a position five most of the time. You haven't, you, you've got second pick. You want to be able to counter their pos one and i don't think we've seen any pos ones banned so far so secret have the full hero pool to be able to choose from oh I mean, that that's one that's got a little bit of flex yeah here that's been rising in popularity some people believe that it did not get nerfed enough through 7.32c i think it was just the raises uh, a little bit of slow reduction uh, is all that was changed and this hero has a lot of at least uh, versatility you can mm -hmm. play it safe lane you can play it mid you can go for a lot of different item builds as well i, I think mean, uh, gpk yesterday went for like the arcane blink we've even seen the right click damage as well we're on the c server you can play it pause five you know anything can work <laughs> when you're here you know you just got to embrace it truly and there's that enchantress i was talking about cool. you know you can't get rid of everything that puppy wants to play He's going to play greedy. You're going to have Nyx Assassin being a bit more of that traditional position five, at least in terms of net worth and warding. But uh, it, it's a great counter to the Chen. You can just get out of the laning stage in a much better spot. And you've got the little friends as that counter to the Chen if he gets a massive army. Again, though, like Polaris are really starting to build up a lineup that's going to start to do a lot of physical damage. So Secret have to keep that in the back of the mind, whether it's going to be an Agi carry picked up for, for Crystallis or someone for Resolution that's able to potentially build into like a Assault Cuirass or something out to help mitigate this because Polaris will have a lot of physical damage. For sure, and they have a lot of burst damage as well. You remember that was the big thing that I was concerned about in a lot of the teams that ended up losing yesterday. You just have these heroes that are able to live for so long because mm. your damage is very slow to ramp up. Chen does a lot of burst damage. Tusk does a lot of burst damage. Shadow Fiend does a lot of burst damage. So you can't just walk in on a Nyx Assassin or an Enchantress and reveal a lot of vision just with your positioning. You're going to die super quickly and not make it like the traditional space-created sort of death that takes 20 or so seconds. You're going to die in like five. 
Now, what are your thoughts about the Bloodseeker here to answer the Razor? I think we saw yesterday it, it was played. Hold that. We, uh, we get the Viper picked up from four. So something that has really fallen out of popularity with a, a lot of the nerfs recently. Do, do you still feel like this is a strong enough hero? I think it's fine, especially paired together with a Tusk. Super strong lane, right? And it's still that BKB piercing, not disable, but the slow goes through the BKB for the Razor, which is going to be really solid. Even just to be able to, again, burst down the Enchantress. You break her, and then suddenly the Untouchable isn't a factor anymore. I do have some concerns... Because I really felt like a big thing about this hero was that you can just get avoided in mid-game fights. But previously with your Aghanim Scepter, you could just go for... You could spam out Viper Strike. And what a way to be able to counter the Razor through BKB. But now you have the, one of the most useless Aghanim Scepter in the mean, nosedive. What do you mean, bro? The what nosedive mean, is great. Bro? Nosedive is dope, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. Definitely top three Scepters in the game without a doubt. Force is going to go first item Scepter. I have no doubt about it. Yeah. Yeah, just torpedoing into a face plant into death <laughs> is what it is basically with tiny cast range yeah i didn't we'll see like you said though like task viper very very strong lane um can have some issues though with dealing with the summon so i do think enchantress and razor could have an okay matchup mainly because of the enchantress though like i think poppy can definitely carry that safe lane for seeker Eh, it depends, right? Like, if Tusk gets off a good Ice Shards, then you're just dead on the edge. There's nothing really that you can do, and you're looking to harass a lot of the time at least the one point into the Enchant, just so that you can have a creep to kind of do the, the tanking for you. But if you do that, then you don't have Nature's Attendance leveled up as much, and you're very vulnerable to dying. So we'll see how it ends up going. Uh, I'm liking Polaris's draft so far. They've... They've done what I wanted them to do. Pick up the tempo, get these heroes that are able to get super active early on, and are able to have a lot of burst damage. This is... I mean, Secrets Draft isn't bad either. The one hero that I'm a little bit more hesitant about is the Invoker, just because I feel like if you're leaving the lane on the Enchantress or the Nyx, with the lineup that Polaris has, maybe you kill the Shadow Fiend, but if they're really active on comms on Polaris, he'll be able to avoid the ganks, and in the meantime, Chen plus whatever position one they're going, and Tusks and Viper are going to kill your core while you're making that rotation. I think both sides are looking for a very similar hero where they need someone that can kind of help anchor the fights and, and keep them locked into place, mm -hmm. your secret. They can kind of have that with the Nyx Assassin Invoker, but as soon as you lose one person, like say if, if, if Nisha has a really rough start to this game, which is it definitely potentially does with rotations coming out from Polaris, then all of a sudden the Razor could be kited. So uh, I'm trying mm -hmm. to think of a hero that can come out from Resolution to, to really help out with... with um, enabling Razor and, and the Invoker to get abilities off. I think Natsumi is going to go Naga Siren this game, and I think it's a pretty damn good Naga game. You can just get by the Aghanim Scepter, you throw that onto the Razor, suddenly he can't just BKB and run through you. Enchantress and Nyx are pretty horrendous at dealing with illusions. I really think it would be a solid game. Yeah, because I've got concerns on Polaris. Like, I was thinking something like your traditional Razor counters in, like, a Morphling uh, or PA, but then I just look at, like, their, their trio core, Shadowfiend, Viper, PA slash Morph. That sounds way too greedy. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think you can go down that route. And Narg would help a lot with your um, with your pushing. You have defensive use of the song. And Maybe like the, you said, with the, the PA well. now, though, against the Beastmaster in lane. Then again, he could just go the Axes, but... Uh, even the Naga Siren now isn't quite as strong because, again, the Axes build, you ignore a lot of that armor, you just deal the magic damage in the laning stage. But again, like, if you're using the Axes, then the lane's going to be pushing in, and it means that the Nyx Assassin or Enchantress, however they want to set this up, it might be Razor Nyx pairing, right? Instead of the Razor Enchantress, just so that you don't have that dual melee setup. Um, you will be... Ember Spirit, okay. So it's a safe lane uh, Shadow Fiend. I don't hate it. Again, you're able to deal with the boars very easily if they're looking to use that sort of build. And even just the Ember Spirit into the Invoker, it's not amazing. You know, you, if you go the Quas build, you can look to dispel off the Flame Guard if he goes that early on. But again, it's just something that only really needs a couple of items to start to get really active. And it's a Lelouch hero, but it's into the Nyx. They've got to really heavily be prioritized yeah. in this Nyx Assassin. He's got to die at the start of every single team fight. I want to see some heavy sentry coverage by Polaris. 
I, I do kind of like the, the switch though from Polaris because I think what the Ember can provide them is something we were bringing up early in the draft that it is a hero that really utilizes early rotations coming out from supports to help dive the uh, the Invoker. You mentioned about the Tornado to be able to purge off the Flame Guard, but you could at least go like a a one to one build, have a point in chain, set up for the dives. You could kill the Invoker over and over again. And if you get off to a good start, then Ember can go for like an early item BKB and just look to make space and look to make as much chaos because you need to have a free fight for the shadow fiend so he can just continually stack up the right clicks that being said i like secrets draft a lot we, we saw it's very similar to yesterday isn't it denok like you've got a lot of vision being gained from the nyx assassin the enchantress creeps the beastmaster creeps along with the hawks as well you've got some comfort heroes with crystalis and nisha it, it just looks like a very very secret draft it does, but I really like Polaris's lanes. Like, th this is exactly how Secret were playing on day one, just all around the vision. But Polaris's lanes look incredibly strong. Chen plus anyone, but uh, a Shadow Fiend that's able to nuke down boars, great. You know, you can't go the boars build. It has to be the Axis, because you're against a Chen. He's just going to Holy Persuasion them, right? So it's going to be a little bit difficult. I think the, the Viper Tusk as well is something that they're going to have a little bit of trouble dealing with, especially with Puppy's more greedy style. So they're really going to need to put a lot of emphasis onto influencing the lanes. But again, the thing is, you're, you're going to be doing this while someone's just harassing you, while they're trying to go for these lane pulls. So I'm interested to see if Secret are able to accomplish this so that they can get into the mid game, which is where they're truly going to shine. But uh, I'm going to just be play devil's advocate i'm gonna go with a counterpoint i think polaris might have this based off of an incredible laning stage but again they gotta focus the nyx assassin nyx has to die and we'll see if they will be able to shut down zayats a hero that was a pivotal reason for them to be able to take those previous games against tempest and what do you know on the nyx assassin again and he's got some pretty good matchups by Carapace is looking great against the Ember, against the Viper, even if the Shadow Fiend's raising in the lane as well. So we could really see Zayats prove to be an issue, and there's a lot of pickup potential on the map. And I already like this Nisha going down the Exort route. They've got some great setup. You have to roar into the Sunstrike. Look at the route that Polaris are going, though. The level one smoke, it pops. They know that someone's hiding off into the trees here. They're just going to show Lelouch for now, just in case they had some sort of ward. And they might be trying to use him as a bit of bait to get them to dive in onto him. Secret's lineup at level one isn't terrible, but that doesn't look like they're going to take it. I'm sure that's a call coming through from Puppy saying, no, 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 don't do that, especially after now they walk underneath this Observer Ward on the cliff with Xavius and Force. So you were mentioning that as soon as you saw the Nyx Assassin getting picked up, I will hold that thought because we actually might have a fight by the uh, under the bounty room. We see Secret kind of grouping up, making sure they play their distance so no one shows themselves until Puppy gets the wrap around and Zayat slams a stun. That's me. That's me. going to be the initial target, but a shard from Xavius gives him some breathing room for the moment. A nice. sun strike will be off the mark as the side Ooh. steps there from that to me. Puppy's gonna go for it, but the Tango region, along with the headdress and the tower is in fact enough to keep Natsumi alive. Ooh. Had to use the Tango for it though, and he's gonna TP all the way out to lane. I wonder if they're just going to keep three people up here on the top side and try and go for that kill once he does eventually come back out to the lane. It's gonna mean that Beastmaster's down here on the bottom side. We haven't mentioned that as well. The fact that you've got the off laner, you know, the, the fancy off laner playing in the safe lane. This is kind of what we've come to expect from Rezo, but they just want to dodge out this Chen if possible. And Polaris, they're eventually going to scout it out, moving AU down to the bottom side. Do you feel like... Do, do they need to keep AU down here for too long? Because Force... Okay, we're going to have a, a dual lane, so never mind. I was going to see if we, the, the tri lane continues up top, because I felt like Viper should have a pretty good matchup versus the Beastmaster. Yeah, I, I think he does as well. I think they were just trying to put as much pressure on to force that sort of movement, because you don't want Natsumi to be in danger of dying, uh, especially since he's just TP back to the lane. Yeah. See, initially how this matchup's able to shape up, though. You got the multiple heroes down bottom that's able to, to pick up some of the creeps. Hard camp will not be available as Polaris have already blocked that. They have not blocked any other camps, however, by the outpost. So both AU and Poppy will have free reign to be able to seal whatever creeps they would like. 
It's kind of funny. This game, both teams have essentially the same objectives. You know, they want to be a little bit greedier on their position fives to be able to get that early mech. They want to get that first big item timing, whether it be, you know, Dragonlance BKB on Force or the, the Helm of the Overlord on the Beastmaster. The position ones, again, they just want that similar sort of item timing. So we're really going to see a heavy clash happening both in the laning phase to make sure you hit your timing first, as well as once we hit the mid game. Like, it's just going to be an all-out brawl, I think. They do have the potential to be able to take so many goddamn towers from either side. So we'll see if you mentioned that it's all going to come down off to the back of the laning phase. And you know, Polaris, you thought they were going to have the advantage. But now seeing how the lanes are set up at the moment with Chrysalis being top and, of course, Resolution being down bottom. Does this kind of change your initial thoughts about how the lanes would shape up? No, I don't think so. Honestly, like, you could tell, you could get me to look at these two drafts without knowing the teams and, um, and ask me, like, which one is Secret and which one of Polaris? And I would have no idea because this is just the way that they draft most of the time, right? And uh, they both accomplish the exact same thing. So I think both teams are going to be very happy. It's just going to come down to the execution. That's a nice Koryu snipe coming through from Poppy, taking away the Wraith Band. I think it was a Mango as well that he might have sniped, so... Not as many stats for Force to be playing with. Minor things to be able to help out. Of course, again, this is going to be a pretty difficult lane for Resolution, but he's got 12 last hits. So actually having a, a bit better time than what I was expecting. I wonder when you're going to... I, I think the one that might be winning out on this a little bit is going to be, <laughs> assuming Force doesn't die here, is going to be AU, right? Because right now it feels like he is the one that's better set up to get more farm in terms of the position fives because just have a look at who's playing in the safe lane for both teams you've got resolution who's gone the wild axes build so he's going to be spamming those out and pushing the lane in which means that force is able to safely stand next to his tower and get a lot of this farm you compare that to the top side of the map where natsumi is the one that's going to be spamming out his shadow raises and pushing the lane in of course chrysalis is happy to get the farm but zayats isn't really able to do anything with that space outside of when he's looking to rotate around the six minute runes. So in terms of farm that you're gonna get, Chen's gonna be far ahead. In top lane, the aggression that's coming out as I had to beautiful use of this by Carapus and Chrysalis is on top and that to me Shadow Fiend. As first blood's gonna be claimed and Chrysalis is still looking to continue to play aggressive, but Xavius will be able to turn it back around, finding his own kill and getting some valuable experience for the task. Well, nicely done. It's what they needed to do. You know, they need to make sure that since you're losing out on that support trade that I was talking about, it means that you're actually getting the kill, feeding a lot more. Lane Lelouch. Gone for the chains. Nisha, though, playing with the fairy fire. We'll be okay. Oh, they're going to rotate the lanes. Natsumi's heading down to bottom. He's, he's not happy with how top shaping up. Well, I think this lane is still going to be just fine for Natsumi, right? Like, you're just going to have lanes shoving back and forth into each other. It means that you give up that, that kill threat, but this isn't one of those games where the mid laner is the true carry. As uh, top side, is Xavius in a little bit of trouble? Might be Zayats, actually. He's got the Spike Carapace available. Was just saving it for the Ice Shards, but not going to be enough. So now with kind of the lanes starting to get this the second formation set up, Really, my eyes turned to when we're going to start to see the supports rotate. Because, again, I, I felt like Polaris had a big advantage of being able to dive Nisha early on. Especially going down this Exort route with the Hand of Midas. He's already got a thousand gold in the bank. This is someone that you need to shut down. And I guess with the, the side lanes being a little bit vulnerable, you, you can't really leave Natsumi alone at the moment. And even Force as well. You know, if they can get on top of the, the Viper, he will yeah, definitely go down. Just with Force, I really like this recognition from him he knows that Zayats just came back from the death he's looking to try and invade in and uh, get that kill onto him before he can rotate for the six minute runes but instead it's going to be Polaris making that rotation Xavius gets the bottle refill looks to help around those power runes which Lelouch he's going to have both of them scoped out Forge Spirit might ooh, still be able to pick <laughs> it up on Xavius but you know could be worse for sure you still got now some gank potential you know what's coming but Still, very strong. Viper plus Tusk. Walks just on the edge of the sentry. Didn't actually quite get into the range of it. And, ooh, just off the mark there. Pretty damn even game, I gotta say. And I think it's gonna be the same throughout until there's some kind of big play. This is where you get those TI moments, right? 
where you get someone that just seems to put the team on their back and say, look, I got this. <laughs> just watching AU and Puppy oh, yeah. inside the jungle. And Puppy, <laughs> AU has his little small creep and then Puppy just takes a Centaur Conqueror and instantly AU's got to run. Oh no. Uh, what I a battle between the these friends, two. Man. I want to see the little friends come out. This is the game for it. Just mentioning as well with these two teams, uh, it feels like already to, to start this game one incredibly even. I think it's going to be oh, actually bottom lane. He's Resolution six, has the roll. TP's coming through with the help of the Sunstrike bonus damage. Is it going to be enough to claim the kill on that Sumi? One more right click and they'll get the Shadow Fiend. Polaris looking to try and hit back, but Lelouch will not be able to catch up to Puppy. And Resolution has a lot of health to play with as well. So the rotation out of the Ember Spirit will net them nothing. He'll even get a tip as well for his measures. Yeah, Rezo for sure lets him know about it. He's saying, was that worth it? And look at what happens in the meantime. Nisha, he's gone for the full-on push. He's the Quasex uh, Exorc build, and it means that he's able to use those Forge Spirits to really force a lot of this emphasis towards the lane. So look at this. Natsumi, he's Ooh. not yet level 5, and you're up against a Midas Nisha, who's level 7.5 already. Getting a ton of denies through as well. This is the, the big weakness about the Shadow Fiend. Early deaths can really set you behind, slowing down the Necromastery. Do not have the mana to be able to keep up with the raise spam. Be concerned for them and how their position one has been able to set themselves up because he's going to take a little bit to come online. And for Secret, you were mentioning, this is a lineup very similar to Polaris. When they get the lead, they can look to get a lot of map control. Oh, for sure. I mean, I don't think they're quite at the stage yet where they want to be going for these these big kills onto towers. I think just a little bit short of the Helm of the Dominator for the Beastmaster, but once he gets that, it's going to be for them, the priority is kill the chant, make sure a lot of their team fight sustain is gone, and then look to go for the tower push. You see, at least between both the, the position fives, trying to find their farm, you mentioned that your know, puppy a little bit more of the, the greedy position five, and been positioning themselves back in the jungle because of how good of a start that resolution's had on the Beastmaster. Gotcha. Yeah, he's you definitely got some stacks as well. He's gone this? away from a lot more of the the lane harassment style. I think he realizes on Natsumi that you're not going to be getting too many kills uh, against this Beastmaster. Maybe might be getting Puppy, but it's still not the greatest kill. And they might get a turnaround actually. With AU going down, so again, a one-for-one -one trade when you're not needing to actually rotate your Invoker is going to be a big win. And again, look at this, double Forge Spirits hitting into the mid-tower. You make the eventual rotation with the Lush, but he's going to get harassed out immediately. He's going to take a lot of damage as well. Nisha doing a really good job to continue to put some pressure on the side lanes in. Mid lane as well. Up to top though. Behind the tier 1 tower, Force is going to be playing with the Viper Strike. A TP out from Chrysalis will be stopped short. This Force has got plenty of damage. They're going to turn to Zayats next, but they recognize that the stuns, they will not be able to keep up as Xavius too far away for the level 6. We do have an Arcane Rune picked up though for Lelouch. I think they still want to wait until he's finished up those phase boots just for that little bit of extra right click. He's still dealing a ton though into Puppy here and looking to try and get the lane passively pushing in with Nisha's in trouble. Nisha's in trouble. Snowball forward. Puppy, I don't think he's going to be able to do too much to keep the Invoker alive. Zayats it's an incredible stun and he'll find it. On to two. Nisha drops a Sunstrike before they're able to get the kill. So it will at least be a one for one trade. They do slow down the Invoker nonetheless, though. Polaris finally making that movement that we were hoping for to try and put some pressure onto their top net worth Invoker. And the important thing as well, the Midas was not on cooldown. It's going to be available as soon as he TPs back. So full efficiency coming through from Nisha there. <laughs> Always got to take a look at the Midas whenever you... You're a... What do you say? You're the mayor of uh, Value Town? Oh, for sure. <laughs> Again, this tower mid lane is going to go down though. Nisha's done an incredible job. A lot of information now that Secret are able to play with, and they didn't have to commit too heavily with extra rotation to, to enable this. So now they can make other plays across the map, and they're going to smoke a Secret. So, bot side though. Shouldn't end up going down. Raw's going to land. There will be no Sun Strike to follow up because the rest of the team. Want to have all their abilities once they show up to the party. Xavier's going to be the first one on the front line with the smoke popping, but he doesn't have the snowball to hold off 
The aggressive maneuver. The secret will find the one for one, but that is a big kill for Polaris with how much farm that resolution has been able to find. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they're going to be very happy with that on Polaris. They didn't have any of the spells available on the Tusk anyway for another 10 or so seconds. So I feel like he half scouted out that. I mean, he's already had the plate mail, sorry, the chain mail component of the phase boots first before he went blades of attack. Just so that he survived that little bit longer gives the time for Natsumi, the true carry this game to be able to uh, to get away and get back to safety. Even building up a few of his own stacks inside the Ancients. Been impressed with how he's been able to catch up. You can see his... The offlaner for Polaris is going a similar build in regards to the Dragonlands, so... They're going down bottom and they'll probably get the kill onto AU here, but this is a four-man rotation and I'm not sure if it's... I mean, maybe they're heavily prioritizing the bottom tier one tower just Oh, because... look at the triangle. Yeah. Crystalis. He's the one that's in trouble. Shards Ooh. needs to be on point, and it's off the mark from Xavius. Are they going to continue to go for the kill? So Zayat's put TP in. He's going to prioritize holding back the Viper for the moment as Chrysalis is soaking away the damage from Xavius. So the race is going to be okay. And with Nisha showing up, they should be able to close the distance. Sunstrike's off the mark. They've got control of the high ground thanks to the sentry. Zayat's with the help of Chrysalis. will be able to get the kill onto Xavius, but Lelouch is showing up. He's going to turn it back onto Nisha. They recognize that the Invoker's already used all the abilities, and Lelouch finds another big kill onto Nisha's Invoker. Yeah, you can't QQ walk if you don't have any points in Wex, unfortunately. So even without having any of that detection, means that Lelouch is able to get that solo pick off onto the Invoker. Really big deal, considering how well the laning stage went for Nisha. Yeah, and the fact that we saw the loose TP down bottom early on and didn't get a kill out of it. Like, that first rotation didn't work out for the Ember Spirit. Resolution tips him, recognizing that he just wasted a lot of time. So the fact that Lelouch is able to get involved in some pretty good big kills versus the Invoker means that he will have some impact now in the early game. Oh, they're even pushing Puppy back with the take it over Wild Wing Ripper. And this is what I was talking about, right? This is the way Puppy it's likes to play. It's a good spot for Dyer to fight. Resolution, they're backstabbing on Lelouch. Someone needs to be able to tank the Sunstrike, but instead they're just going to turn to try and land down the kills with a Requiem. Clipping onto Resolution, but the rest of Secret is starting to chop. It's Crystalis trying to lock onto Natsumi, but Force will shove him out to the left side. Crystalis. And now with a Poison attack, getting multiple stacks, but Polaris will respect the Hierogram without any, having any information there. They're not going to walk up blindly. I mean, this is just solid Dota all throughout, right? This is what I came to see during the TI last chance qualifiers, is two teams that know exactly what their strategy is and are executing it really well. The difference between a lot of these fights just comes down to like half a centimeter missing on some of these spells. Then open up a little bit more of the map as well now. This is the sentry coverage that I was talking about. They're making sure that they've got around all of these key objectives that they're going for. Not just the Observer Ward, but the sentry as well to scout out a lot of this Zayat's positioning. He's already died two times this game where a lot of times previously he was just straight up flawless. Up in top lane, just looking to make as much space as he can. Oh, Jesus, this, this is a lot of burst damage, man. It's really good yeah. against this secret style. They try well, and get up in your you? face. Another kill. Position 5 also going down on the opposite side of the map, so both sides getting rid of the captains. Polaris are so close to being ready to go though. You've nearly got the Maelstrom available on the Lou, she's level 12. You can really look to start to amp up the speed, already having the Mask of Madness and the Dragon Lance on Natsumi. Uh, Mech recently picked up as well from AU. They're, they're ready. I mean, Xavier's still a while away from the Blink Dagger, but you're gonna get that gold from a lot of these team fights that they're taking. And well, outside of AU, they've got all TPs available to be able to contest up on this top side if they want to. They might not, though. I mean, it's a Beastmaster with the Hawk and with a Siege Creep as well. So well, this might be one of the rare mistakes that they've been making on Polaris, just throwing a hero out here that isn't super capable of keeping a lane pushed out and they didn't have the vision to make that play either. At least they might get mid lane in response. Yeah, let, let's see what the call is going to be for Polaris if they bring some extra member to try and secure mid. That Tumi's going to be nearby. Right, if they can collapse on the back, so they've got to be really quick here on Polaris. And they will indeed with Natsumi. A couple of right clicks and the T1 tower is going to go down. So a nice trade. Polaris have a net worth lead up to 2,000 at the moment. Oh, they saw the invis being popped coverages, by though. They saw it. They have that ward in the mid lane as well. Freshly placed down there by Puppy. 
Ooh, they see him. Lelouch is in trouble. The stun control, it's perfect. Lelouch will go down for the burst from Nisha and look at all the summons into Roche they go. And they've got vision of exactly where Xavius is as well. I don't think they want to be moving off to the side just to try and get a position for Roche are much more valuable for them to pick up, but it's a lot of these trades happen. You know, Polaris aren't happy to let these things go just for free. They've still got a little bit of a net worth lead, despite the fact that they're going up against a Midas. They're going up against uh, having taken the Roshan on secret. So AU, he's just spending a lot of the time farming. He's all about getting into that next item for himself. Probably, I would think the four stuff, right? A lot of what they've got set up for is to be able to deal a lot of damage to someone that's just locked into position. You think the Sunstrike, you think the, uh, the Static Link, even just uh, an Nyx Assassin able to get off a lot of his stun combinations. Four Staff is going to go a long way towards protecting against that. It's a big reason why Natsumi's just rushed a Hurricane Pike instead of uh, necessarily going for a, an early-ish BKB or, or another farming item. See Poppy under the Observe Ward. Lelouch is going to reveal the ward nearby. Remnanting over the tree line to try and secure the kill. But it is... Even though it's just a measly enchantress, it gives them now the chance to be able to shove up mid, shove up bottom, and it does kind of slow down Secret from getting this kind of five-man lineup going with the Aegis to be able to put some pressure onto the top side of the map. So that kill does help out a little bit here for Polaris. It does, but Polaris are completely free to push on this bottom side. They have no glyph, and Nisha TP'd right Jesus. in the middle of a creep wave. Like, even with those boots of travel, there's nothing that they could do to be able to defend this. Sure, he's got the Sunstrike, but I feel like you are not happy of giving up that big of a, an area of the map just for a little, like, a couple of waves of farm. Yeah, and, and again, often like a position five, you're happy with going down, but we just see Polaris, they're in a position to be able to capitalize on the kill. So again, really big props for them with how they're setting up, and they might be able to get another. Puppy, very similar spot to what we saw last time. Still haven't dewatered that spot. Look at this triangle of vision that they've got right next to where the tier one and tier two tower mid are. It's just like, there's nowhere that you can invade onto this bottom side of the map at all. And honestly, for Secret, there's no reason to come down here. There's no tier two tower to play with safely. There's no outpost. You know they've got vision Pop control. Lane. The Lelouch might be in trouble if Zayats can find him. They need to lead him with the initial stun. He's just gonna blink in for the extra control, but it's not enough. A remnant away, the cold snap wasn't able to lock him into place. Are they going to get an effective trade out of this, though? This is what I've been talking about the entire time. Polaris did a great job to get that tier 2 tower, recognizing that Nisha was slightly out of position to be able to defend it, but they don't have the heroes to be able to go up towards that top side to defend their own tier 2. Understandably, they're going up against an Aegis, but I'm not sure if they got enough out of that one. Maybe if they got a little bit of damage into that mid tier 2 tower before this point, I would have been happier actually just going to TP or start to TP a few people back to try and deal with this high ground push. Yeah. I love this call from Secret. As soon as you see the Viper up top, they're going to try and smoke and reclaim the bottom jungle because yep. they know that this is completely water. Poppy again has died multiple times here. And as soon as you see someone leave this era, now you can take a fight as a full team to look to reclaim it. It's not even just that they know it's water. They know the number of... Oh, they're baiting the, they're baiting the power rune, the bottom power rune. Oh, Poppy, not again. Looks like the Enchantress oh, in the lane the should be going down. Him on the river, though. They're onto the Ember Spirit, but the Roar's going to be out. The damage should be enough this time with Nisha helping out. Um, Lelouch just slipped out of their grasp underneath the Tier 2 Tower top, but this side in the river, Secret will be able to bring him down. Much bigger kill, for sure. I mean, he is still a big part of the tempo. He's a big part of finding that back line, being, uh, trying to bait out a few of these key spells from Secret. They're going to need to pop the Glyph here, but I'm not sure if they're going to have enough to be able to defend against the consistent they Natsumi. push. Oh. Natsumi's going to be cautious. Nice four star, but the double stun. Sunstrike for up. Xavier's actually going to look to jump into the middle. Maybe Secret have gone too far. Chrysalis is playing around with the nice BKB, but he used it on the first life. It will not have the BKB for round two. It's a Requiem's going to come out just before the tornado. So Polaris can look to surround Chrysalis and bring down the Razor with ease. Oh, and they didn't even get the tier 2 tower. I feel like they could have very easily just stood in a lot more safety, allowed the supports to really have a much larger impact, and just hit down that tower. Sure, they popped the glyph, but you still had that ancient black dragon. You had the helm of the overlord as well, so just maybe getting a little bit overconfident with all the vision that they have, thinking that they can get the double. It takes the ages out of the hands now from Secret there, and they would have had it for another 30 seconds. 
What are we expecting now for the next couple of minutes? Well, I guess that's maybe the answer is Polaris. They want to keep the tempo going. A smoke from three underneath their top jungle. Nisha's the closest here in proximity. Ballsy smoke as well, considering how much Secret's been playing up on that top side. You're not 100% sure if they've got any kind of D-Wards happening there. But we're trying to catch out Nisha. He's got a few points in the West. My now. team soon. Yeah, they see Nisha. You've got the blink, Not an easy kill. Xavius has got the blink to get Insling on top of him. The TPs are going to start to come out, but the damage is raining in thick and fast. As Nisha will go down, but the turnaround's going to be there from Secret. Force will be able to get some distance. AU's got the mechanism still to play with, but it will not matter. So the damage, it's been dealt, but Lelouch just showed up to the party. In goes the Ember Spirit. Even that zoom is going to close the distance as well. As Chrysalis trying to stand his ground with the BKB, but the right clicks are raining in from that Tsumi. As Chrysalis just can't get any damage off, and now Resolution. They're going to chase down the Beast Monster in between the T1 and T2 Tower, and they will not forget the tips that were given prior as Polaris will send some back Resolution's way. You got any tips? We'll give them back with interest. That's exactly what they're saying. I mean, Rezo, he's been pretty vocal about how he feels about the sea server and the sea pub, so I'm sure Polaris, <laughs> they're, they're taking that a little bit seriously. They even pop the glyph there. They don't have a glyph refresh as well, so they're going to be very easily able to take this tier 2 tower. They can look to get the tier 2 mid as well if they wanted to, or if another team fight goes their way, there's nothing stopping them from just breaching that high ground seen just with the amount of kills so far 31 kills in 23 minutes it's not like either team are lacking for their ability to be able to team fight i'm really impressed with polaris's itemization these four staffs these hurricane pikes yep. have just been on point allowing them to play on the back lines a lot of the time forcing a little bit heavier of a commitment with that extra attack range from team secret mm. and then repositioning off the back of that at the at the triangle force might be in trouble nisha's going to be able to set up with zayats as well a beautiful one-two punch force Ooh. we'll try and get some distance no way force is alive no and nisha is in trouble a bkb beautiful lineup of the tornado in fact secret they're going to jump into the middle taking the fight around the secret shot there's a loose can instantly follow up forward as both supports are going to go down from secret they will keep nisha alive a bkb a great tornado gets him out of harm's way, but at the end, Polaris will still find two kills. And that slippery snake nearly got away, going down onto the low ground, dodging the deafening blast. Oh, resolution? All right, free kill. <laughs> Tip it back, Rezo. Come on, you know you want to. Uh, uh, you can't feed the beast, man. Again, we've spoken. Polaris are a vocal team. You give some tips over to them. When they find that lead, they will definitely give them back. But... You did just say, Pry, that you're incredibly impressed with Polaris' itemization and how the four staffs and just the defensive uh, toolkit they're going for is a big reason on how they can shut down Secret's kind of uh, team fight and their strategy. Now, what can Secret do to address that? What do we need to see coming out from them in the next couple of minutes to kind of deal with uh, the defensive toolkit that Polaris have? See, the thing is with Secret, it kind of feels like they're a lot more committal with a lot of their spells, right? With the task, mm -hmm. you can roll in, punch, blink out if you're really on point. You've got an Ember Spirit that could just poke and prod from the back lines. Whereas Secret, they're kind of like, well, if we just need to max out our damage as much as possible so that we're guaranteeing that we're getting a kill onto a high priority target. That's why Puppy's gone a Witchblade on his Enchantress and he's going into the Dragonlance next. He just wants to amp up that damage as much as possible. Both teams really looking to play around this Roche Pit. They should know that this smoke is happening. I mean, Puppy just got his Wildbring Ripper taken away. Right now. Lush is at least. Yeah, he doesn't have a Sentry Ward to play around, and that's where they're pinging. Like, Zayats is pinging up there saying if he comes here, he's dead. I'm sure he would absolutely love on Lelouch to have a Sentry set up between the Tier 3 and the Tier 2. Who can you look to commit out here? A couple of seconds left on the smoke, and they're going to use it on Puppy. Jesus. The damage from that zoom, and that's going to continue to get scary and scary Again, as the game goes on. They don't have the glyph, so they could use this siege creep. They can push in. They've got extra armor from the Wild Ring Ripper and take away all of the outer towers now that Secret have to play around with just one minute left on that Roche respawn. Glyph being popped by Polaris, and they'll be able to clear out the siege ground. creep. Yeah, why not? Force people back. They got the presence or effect in buildings. They will do a lot of damage here. 
Maybe, yeah, they they have enough vision to know that these TPs had started to come back. Lush even cutting the bottom wave, making sure that there's not going to be that additional pressure coming in to the bottom side. Their lane's going to be passively pushing out, meaning that any kind of smoke rotation that they make around the Roche pit is not going to be quite so obvious. Even just some of these sentry wards being placed down, guaranteeing that there's not going to be a... Uh, a Beastmaster Hawk just scouting out this huge, huge objective for both teams to need to take. Do you feel like Secret need to prioritize their supports at the start of the fights? Because it feels like if they jump the cores, they're not going to be able to kill them with the Hand of God and, and the Snowball as a save. It depends if they're just completely on point, right? They, okay. they do have that ramping up damage, so maybe they can kill the Ember Spirit, but outside of that, I don't know. Let me see. This could be a great pick. Go the full wraparound as well. Just trying to find someone on the back lines. They're all avoiding the smokes for now. Puppy's the main target that they're looking for. I'm not sure if that's the best one, though. Just going to show. Natsumi's already starting Roshan. So Dyer feels strong enough for the 3,000 net worth lead that they can just brute force down this second Rosh. Well, they've got they the jam on very Tusk good as well. vision. So they got complete vision. Roche is just melting. Yep, Secret, so they're not going to be fast enough to contest it. Natsumi gets the Aegis, they get the Arcanum Shard, and now Lelouch is going to jump instantly over towards an Ix-Assassin, a BKB used to get the kill onto the support, and our Secret, they need to get out. Well worth committing that uh, BKB for it as well, because just look at what else you're up against, right? What's an Enchantress or a Razor going to do with a BKB? A little bit of extra damage? Who cares? All you care about is getting stunned as this Ember Spirit, and, well, there we go. The gem coming in even more handy. Xavius has already got three Observer Wards out of the last two minutes, just based off of this gem purchase. Ooh. Even a DD on the damage top side. Room. Yeah, they're giving it to Natsumi. Almost level 20 as well here for the Shadow Fiend. They're not going to wait to go up the high ground, though. They are ready. Just need to get the lanes in a position where they can put Secret firmly inside the base. Just trying to look for what the answer is going to be here for Secret with the high ground defense. Invoker. They're trying to wrap. incredible. What they're trying to do. They're just yeah. trying to get a lot of these lanes passively pushing out. They don't have a mid creep wave to play with, right? Yeah. TP coming back here from Force to ensure that this isn't going to be the case for quite some time, but it's smart play from Secret, just delaying things out a little bit. They're not going to be too sad about the situation, though, on Polaris. It means that they're going to have BKB up in another 15 seconds for Lelouch. It means that they can take this next fight now that the next Assassin has respawned. It feels like early on, though, for Secret, is a lot of it's going to come down to how you can address the Shadow Fiend. If you can get the Hellbit off for the, before the BKB, maybe even the Deafening Blast as well, if Niche is in a, in a close enough position. But Crystalis, he has to lock onto the Shadow Fiend. If you are not stealing his damage in the middle of the fight, then it's going to be very, very difficult for just his involvement, because that's pretty much his role in these fights. You need to slow down the Shadow Fiend. Everyone else on Polaris is just going to look to make as much space for Natsumi to right click. And he doesn't have a BKB yet on uh, the Shadow Fiend, but that Titan Sliver is going to do him a lot of good, just for a little bit of that magic resist. You know, some of the status resistance coming through means that he is a lot more capable of just standing and tanking this. And, well, they've been able to push out one of the previous waves, but this one is all well and good. They've got to force out, you would assume, another Glyph coming through, even the Force Staff, just to make sure that they're not oh, getting jump rid of in, Xavius. On the Nisha. They might look to turn to deal with Puppy as well. Force on the low ground, starting to stack up the damage. And there's the Force after to, to drop the, the combo. And Lelouch is going to look to jump in. But all it is is just space for Natsumi. As the objectives are starting to fall. Actually, the DD's gone. But look at how quickly a lot of these waves melt. And yep. Going to use the Glyph. But that means they have nothing left. <laughs> no Glyphs left at all. If they lose this fight, Secret lose the game. Natsumi toying with them, but Zayats is in with the double stun. Meanwhile, Xavius to the left side as well as is in trouble. It's going to snowball forward with the help of the Requiem, but Chrysalis is protected with the BKB. Polaris have got to be cautious. They need to respect Secret inside their base. And Natsumi is just getting all the space once again. A full set of barriers clean, but Ooh, Zayats, Zayats! A triple stun, but there's just no follow-up. You can stun all the people you want in the world, but you need the team nearby. Nisha wasn't there. You had to... Refill up in the resources. Now the Invoker's back in the midst. They weren't able to capitalize on the opening that Zayat's found for them. I mean, they're, they're happy to just go. Again, they didn't lose the full team fight. In fact, they didn't even lose any heroes throughout all of that. Puppy getting incredibly low. But look at that. They've already got popped the carapace on Zayat. Oh, I think they've got to commit onto it. trouble. Great snowball. Onto the Kree wave as well. So Natsumi 
will not be sent further inside the base. Are they going to stick around here for Polaris? First life almost claimed. They want to give it up. So we'll have a minute 10 left on the ages. They we're going to try and sun strike to get rid of it. But it will be off the mark. They could take back, take away this outpost, prevent any cheeky little backstabs. AU as well. He's gone the Aghanim shards, so he's even able to steal away a big part of Secret's damage output with that Helm of the Overlord. And the smoke from them. Well, they want to continue to keep Secret locked inside their base. Why not? They see Nisha out. 45 to make seconds sure on the, the economy. Ages. 15 seconds on the Requiem. It's going to catch him off guard. Oh, smoke pops. Nice. Great reactions out of resolution as well. With a blink inside the base, the Lucius is going to hold two people into place for the moment. Chrysalis is still playing with the BKB, but it's going to be too late. With Natsumi into the middle of the right oh, click. Oh, no, they get a couple of misses. Chrysalis just survives. The Halbert. Secret keeps the Razor alive. Heaven's Halberd doing a body of work. They don't have that. They have, excuse me, the backdoor protection for now, but that mid creep wave is going to push its way in. Again, no glyph to be able to protect against this. Zayat again. A beautiful double stun onto two cores. The snowball used onto the Shadow Fiend. They'll just turn and blow off the Nyx Assassin. Meanwhile, to the north as well. Force bodies poppy. A solo kill coming out from the Viper, but Nisha's into the middle. A defensive use of the BKB is going to be able to allow him to reposition. But the Aegis has expired. Polaris have to be cautious. They're going to reevaluate how they can take this team fight. Secret are pushing outside the base, but they will not be able to catch up as Polaris. Group themselves around together as five and make sure they will retreat as a team. Man, I am really feeling the influence of AU this game. You could just tell, yep. like, the ex-coach making those in-game calls. Even just something as simple as the, the sentry ward on the retreat being dropped out. Realizing the way that Secret like to play. They always want to go for the plus one. Zayas is hitting some amazing impales so far, but they just don't have the damage to be able to follow up. And now yeah I, I think that's an incredible point like au just f the the communication and the the captain that the captaincy that he's providing them uh, we see the call like they're going high gun again and they don't even have ages they feel so strong yep they got the wraith pack that they can happily drop down it's gonna be prioritized a little bit here has to be careful with the position uh that's to be just denied the wraith pack <laughs> all right Xavius, jump in snowboard used aggressively this time Puppy's gonna go down. They might be able to hold back now without the snowball used defensively, but the Ember Spirit's gonna be in some trouble. But in the meantime, Natsumi once again had to free fight the chains, leashing two together. Polaris need a way to close the distance, and that's where Xavius comes into play with a double snowball, clipping Nisha, who will look to buy back, but they just don't have the ways to hold them inside the meatball as Razor goes down from afar. Polaris, an 18,000 net worth lead, and our secret space is their own home. Uh, there's nothing that they can do about this. The big part of the Jeans damage are yep, is the Razor. This is this was just an outplay by Polaris. I really like both drafts. Both of them wanted to do the exact same thing. Xavius <laughs> again embracing the SEA server, diving into the fountain. But uh, what what a game! What a game! This is exactly what I want to see out of both of these teams. But Polaris today they were just better. They executed better. Their strategy was better. A lot of the movements that came out were just a, a little bit superior. And the itemization for mine that was yeah. Chef's kiss. Perfect, perfect, yep. perfect, all the way from Polaris. Yeah, I felt like their read of the game was incredible. And like you said, the itemization.